morning. Around town is a nonprofit group they call Friends of the Urban Forest. They all go around planting street trees all through to establish the urban canopy. They work with Department of Public Works, DPW. They open the sidewalk and they start planting trees. So this is an example of one. It's an Australian tree called the Brisbane Box. So take a look. It's got nice scaffolding all around, nice stakes. We'll go in for a little bit of a closer look. Some plant ties, nice and loose. One there, another one there. But the plant ties are kind of loose. So the question you want to think is, the trunk can move back and forth freely. Why would they want to have a trunk move back and forth freely? What does that do for a tree? Why does a trunk need to move? What does that have to do with its roots down below? The movement of the trunk back and forth with the wind. So that's the question. Good morning. And here with this Potosporum tree. And check it out. It looks like it has some kind of wound at some point. It's got bleeding, some kind of a sap. And there's some kind of a creature growing out of it. Let's get a little bit closer. Look. But the question is, what is this creature? And what is it doing on this tree? Okay, I'm standing right here in front of a Norfolk Island pine. It's an Auroracaria heterophyll. Comes from the island off the coast of Australia. Windy coastal place, just like San Francisco. It loves it here. And it gets to be a huge, huge tree. So check it out. It's got the nice peeling bark. She has some parasites and it's a Got big old cones. We'll take a scan of it, go all the way up. Beautiful southern hemisphere conifer. But the question is this it's about 10, 15 feet away from high voltage power lines. You can see them, they're at the top. Above all the other cables, the 110, 220, and all that television cable. So, my question is this what are you going to have to do to this poor tree? So in a few years, it don't contact the high power lines. All right, I'm standing here with my buddy Pohurukawa. That means Metrosideros excelsa. It's a New Zealand Christmas tree. Come to us from down there by Maori land. So it's a popular tree around here because it blooms usually come Christmas time. It blooms all red, real pretty. Kind of like the poinsettias and everything else come around Christmas time. What we're checking out is, as you go up on the trunk of this tree, you'll see all this weird growth coming out of it. You're like, what the heck is this stuff? Why is it growing there? I'll give you a closer shot. So take a quick look as you scan. We plant this tree a lot all around town. So you'll be able to get a good look at it. Some of the tree workers be like, people will say, what is this ugly weird stuff? And they have them all cut it right out of the tree. But the tree, it grows these things for a particular reason. So, what kind of a plant part are they? Why does it look so hairy and tangled? So unsightly. Hello. I'm standing here next to one of the most beautiful magnolias I ever did see. It's a yellow magnolia. And you can see the buds are just starting to pop out. And it's going to be this beautiful, beautiful sight. I want you to look a little bit down below for this following question. So let's take a little pan down further down. So as we go down the trunk of this deciduous magnolia and come in a little bit closer, you'll see a wire cable tie. It is meant to keep the trunk upright, nice and straight, rather than leaning with the wind. But take a little bit closer look where that wire is starting to contact the trunk. What do y'all think is going to happen, whether this year or in a few years, as the wire continues to eat into eat into the poor tree's trunk? Holy moly.
super magnificent trunk. There you go. Wire or no wire? Howdy doody. I'm here with my old buddy Fig Tree. So as often happens in town when people start pruning trees, they will limb them up pretty darn good, take away a lot of the foliage. Either so that people have views, look out the window, be unobstructed, or there's this kind of aesthetic that feels like a tree. If it's all bushy, it looks messy to us as people. So we want them to all limb it all up so you can see the trunk a little bit. Kind of comforting feeling. So these trees, they were just limbed up. We'll pan up and take a look. Most of the interior, a lot of the leaves are all gone. And these trees, they take pruning pretty darn well. Doesn't seem to bother them. The pests and the illness and the diseases don't strike right away, even though they got open wounds. The white latexy sap does seem to help them out a little bit. But the question is this. Take a look at this tree, and we'll go across the street at one of his little buddies, another fig tree. One that hasn't been pruned. Full, full green foliage. So here, back again. So as a reaction to having them pruned heavily, what do you think these trees are going to do? What's the next step? How's it going to react? And where is it going to send out leaves, if any? This here woody tree is my friend, the Southern Magnolia. The evergreen magnolia from Southern United States, Magnolia grandiflora. If you go in for a little bit of a closer look here, we got real well tied up. Real well tied up. Try and shake the trunk, hardly even move. And down below, one of these watering bags. Fill it with water and the water goes down below. So if you was a magnolia, would you like to be tied up so tight? And would you like to have a bag around your crown, your crotch, there at the base? For watering purposes. Do you think these measures that humans think are helping out the tree are in fact beneficial to you as a southern magnolia? This here questions a little bit of tree detective work. Kind of something maybe if you're a consulting arborist or a plant tree pathologist you might have to encounter. So look at this huge old scar on this alder tree right here by the pharmacy. What caused it? Some eating it or what? Here's a few hints. All right. This time we're looking at a loquat tree. But as you come on down, 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 down to the base of the trunk, hey, there it is again. That strange damage. Or it looks like half the trunk's been beaten off. And it's only on one side of the tree is like that. So you're doing the investigation. What might be the potential cause? Two separate surrogates. All right, here I am with my buddy Victorian Box. There's another Potospora. And like I mentioned earlier, you gotta investigate what's causing all these pot trees to have this big old problem on the side of it. So check it out. Look at this thing. Oh my God, this rod is falling apart. So check this out, and I give you the hit. And again, pan this way, and that's the hit. Pan that way. That way. Ooh, ow, 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 ow. There you go. It's only on this side of the tree. So what's causing this problem? Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Well, this here's a tree, or what used to be a tree. Now it's just a big stick of lumber. And what's real tasty for a lot of organisms, whether you're a termite, or you're a beetle, or a fungus, you can take it apart, make it into food for yourself. So the question then is, in order to have this trunk here, how do they keep it from getting eaten? Okay, you're looking at a sheet of plywood. And you're looking at the little round things, knots. So if we're thinking about trees and woody plants, what are the knots? What comes out of the knots? From the tree. Okay, that's it. 
All right, this here we're looking at some woody tissue, trunk of wood. Or look at these lines. Look like some wood carver been in through here. So what caused these lines? Are they natural, biotic, or abiotic? Well, good afternoon. We're here wandering around campus checking out how we've repurposed some of the fallen logs, use them as path liners. We're also watching how nature reclaims all of our creatures and breaks it all down. We're going to take a look at a couple of things. Let's bust this thing open just a little bit. Whoa! Whoa! What the heck? Look at all them white threads. All right, keep this one in mind. I'm going to put my hand on another one. Down this one. Like a real fine dust. And all dry too. So what are the creatures that make these two things? And what are they doing? One, this one. The white long threads look like roots. But I tell you, they're not roots. And the bits of dry powder at the base. What's happening here? Please explain. I'm here next to my old friend, name's Myoporum. We always teach this one plant ID because it's real special. Don't know if you can see it through it with the lights on it, but you can see all those breathing holes, those stomata real clearly on this particular tree. But as of late, they've been having a lot of pest problems. People have been chopping them down. The leaves get all deformed and gnarled, and the tree just don't look as good as it could or it should. Let me zoom you in for a little bit of a closer look so you can see it like me. See those gnarled perturbations, so to speak? And down here too. Leaves get all mangled and twisted. So this one, you might do some research or just take a wild guess. What do you think is causing this tree to do this? Is it a bug? Is it a fungus? Or is it a virus? Alright, myoporum liatum. Thank you very much for your help.